Hi everybody, my name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm, I'm Nicole. E I'm Eli. I'm Jason. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. We are so thankful that you could join us today. We are going over numbers three. We have been through three books of the Torah completed. We are on our fourth book now, so we are so glad you could join us all these weeks and learning the Torah with us. Yes, and how are you boys doing? Good. 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 What are you guys doing today? Uh, we're what are you going to be doing today? We're going to be doing a chicken floor, a uh, cement floor for the chickens. Pour and cement floor, huh? Do we hire people out to pour cement? No. Nope. Do we do Not it? Anymore. <laughs> do we hire people out for electricians? Nope. nope. Do we hire stuff out for plumbers? Nope. Do we hire anything out? No, oh, outside of Babylon, you pretty much just do it yourself. Yeah, that's one thing. That's one. I guess that is a big point. Once you leave North America, um, all those trades, like you, you come down to a, a world like we are in right here, they don't have stuff like code. Build stuff to code, or your house will burn down. There's no houses to burn down. Everything is brick. Everything in here is brick. And, and you don't need a you don't need a, well, a certificate or any uh, any degree saying you're an electrician or anything. You you can screw in a light bulb. Good enough. You're an yeah. electrician. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Good even, job. Even the attorneys down here. I'm pretty sure they don't go to school. I don't think there's any kind of schools for anything out here. Um, I don't even think half the attorneys we ever used prior to even know how to read. Honestly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, they're they're not real educated. You know, when it comes from uh, North America, where you have to get your doctorate and your PhD, which stands plumbing. for piled higher and deeper. Uh, so you get plumbing in this country is like uh, just you just basically stick you basically glue two pipes together, and there yeah. you go. If you go, there doesn't have to be a certain way. It doesn't have to be a certain size. Heck, you could put like a giant four inch pipe and put all the way to a half inch pipe by the time yeah. you're done. Yeah, to get a little bit of fire and make your uh, your PVC ends. Um, you don't have the right fittings, no problem. Yeah, you just, you just fire take it up. Out. You, take, you break out the blowtorch, you put it on low, and you just spin it around and put another piece of PVC until you basically get like a little coupler end on it. Yeah, you there's you you just kind of go with what you have down here. There's no such thing as having the right tools or the right stuff. It's just. Uh, we use what makes what what we have. At the and end so, of it, you just uh, you just put a concrete layer over all the walls and everything. You never know. Yeah, well, some of our walls, some of our walls we've done are kind of uh, well. No, I'm talking like you just full on do what. Uh, what is it? Stuck the walls, I think. Yeah, I don't know what they call it in the states. Here in the here down south, they call it repeo and uh, stucco. Is it maybe? I don't think it is. It stucco? I don't think so. I think stucco is something else. It's like when you it's like when you put concrete over a wall and you smooth it out, and make it like all nice and smooth, so you don't see the bricks anymore. Yeah, down here is called repeo. I have probably what it's in English. I never heard of that word before. Yeah, I don't. Years, I don't know so. what it is in, the, in English or the states or anything of the sort. All right, well that's it. So thank you guys very very much. We appreciate your time. You guys are our extended family. We do love and cherish each one of you guys. Um, we, it was real weird yesterday. We had a, a guy that was a, um, he had been following us for a long time and then he, he unsubscribed, I guess, or something. Um, and then he came back yesterday and then he, he said we were, we had been teaching hate or that, um, somebody out there had said we were teaching hate or something of the sort. And I don't know where that actually comes from. Um, I'll tell you what I do hate. I do hate false doctrine. I hate teachers that teach falsely. Um, I do not, I love Jim Staley, I love Paul Nissan, but I hate what they are doing to the sheep. I hate their bad doctrine. I hate the evil that they do. And when when you are in a position of leading Yah's people and you are leading them astray, that makes you a false teacher. It makes you a false prophet. And if that's hating, then I am sorry, but that is I will never ever back down. I will never ever stop. I will never ever let evil reign. And when people are coming out there and saying that Yahushua and Yah are the same people and you know they're they're telling everyone else they're idiots if you don't believe that and this is doctrinally when it says hundreds of times uh, across the Bible that it is the son of the most high is Yahushua. So that's the stuff that I hate. And but I don't I don't hate them. I love them as brothers and I love everyone as brothers, even the haters and people come on here and rage all the time. Speaking of which, um, Let's roll into a uh, uh, message. Oh, she deleted her comment. Dang it. I missed it. All right. So this is what she said. She said, the body of Christ is not under the law. We're under grace. That's all that's going on right now. No one can keep the laws and blah, blah, blah. You can't click it? it no, it's, it's gone. She deleted her comment. Uh, uh, and then she... Um, it was probably in my email, but it's not worth it. It's just, it's more of the exact same. And she was, she was you know, why do the heathens rage, right? You know, it's like we are under grace. Um, you know, you might be under grace, but you are also under the law. You, you don't, there's no, <laughs> I mean, we, we see these things all the time. And, um, then she was saying no, because 
this guy Kyle Bunting, this was five months ago, he goes, so we have to keep every single one of these perfectly all the time or else hell? Where am I supposed to get the ram's horn? That's driving me insane. This is so difficult. And then she like, she's like, no. And I'm like, you know, I said this path is an immediate one, brother. First and foremost, uh, give our videos on the commandments of you. Most of the commandments you probably already keep and don't even know their commandments. The commandments that you will keep alive. The commandments will keep you alive. And if nothing else, they're super good advice from our uh, from our designer, our creator. Shofars are pretty cheap. You can get them for twenty dollars, and I, that's not that's not cheap for us. Twenty dollars would be like that's actually a lot of money for us. But back in the day, it used to be cheap, and anybody back in the day, as I would say, anybody had twenty dollars. But now we live, you know, twenty dollars is like. Uh, two weeks of food for us. <laughs> so anyway, um, and then I, she's like, no. And then I quote her this and I, I, it says, yay, a man, a man may say you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. You believe there's one Elohim. You do well. The devils also believe and tremble, but you know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. So Eli, what is our, what is, what is works? Um, well, work should also be defined as like keeping the Torah by showing our faith through works, by showing our action, like actions speak louder than words, basically, by following his Torah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, actions speak louder than words, and that, that is right. And you can, um, I, I think, uh, what, what, what chapter was it was uh, where a man, uh, if you give a man, a, he asks you for a loaf of bread and you give him a snake. Or give him a rock. That has early been, Matthew, early Matthew. Matthew yeah, as Messiah, Matthew. Yahushua said that. Um, and that's the thing, right? And it, we are told, and I mean, when you want to have grace and you don't want to have the laws of God, you are living a godless, sinful life. And it is, it is, you may not think that you are, but ignorance is not bliss when you are standing in the fire. And so we must absolutely get our game together and dial this in and, and you know, we've dialed in these laws. We've dialed in these laws, statutes and commands. Um, there is not a commandment so far that I have, or I've never even found a commandment that is too hard to bear. Um, there are some that are trickier than others. And there are some that um, it's really hard to do, but I'm not talking about pork. I make mean, the, the one that I think is really, really hard to do is, is separate during a wife cycle, right? You're supposed to completely separate for seven days. You're not supposed to be, you know, touch the bedding. You're not supposed to touch her. You're not supposed to touch any of that stuff. And I find that extremely hard to do in a little house where we didn't build another thing. But that's the only command that I ever, ever found that is trickier to do than the rest of them. There's, there's nothing. Oh, oh you know, you, you want to go murder somebody? Oh, okay. You want to go steal from somebody? You want to lie to somebody? Well, that's the moral commands, Jason. Well, we keep the moral laws. Well, we keep all of them except the Shabbat, right? We only keep 90% of them. And, and that's, that's essentially what it is. So um, let's get into this. Um, we're into Numbers 3. These also are the generations of Aaron and Moshe in the day that Yahuwah spoke with Moshe in Mount Sinai. All right, hold on. Before I go into that, I, I got to finish the last thought on that, on that gal. What I wrote back to her and what I'm trying to do differently when you... Because we, we get these all the time, right? Every every at least once a day, maybe maybe once every couple of days, people are like, "We are not under the law," blah 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 blah. So I tried something a little different. This is what I told her. I said, "Can you tell me what Messiah Yahushua said at the end of this verse?" And I quoted her Matthew seven. And in Matthew seven, it says, "Not everyone who come to me, uh, you know, saying Adonai Adonai, uh, it says only those who are without iniquity, right? Those those who are without iniquity, because those who are." Um, in sin are told to depart from our Messiah. So that is the comment she deleted when she, she didn't even want to respond to it. I didn't, I didn't go into it like I normally go into them because I'll normally quote a bunch of things and nobody wants to hear it, right? By the time they get to this channel, most people are completely blind. They don't care about any of this stuff. They definitely don't care about Yah, right? And they probably have a fridge full of bacon, a fridge full of unclean foods. And the last thing they want to hear is that they need to change their dietary guidelines because... Yah hates when people eat pig. And so anyway, that's what I told her. And I, I'm like, well, then maybe this will go different. But instead of her even responding to it, she deleted her comments. So I, I haven't found the right way to unprogram these people. They just they just don't care. All right, let's go on again. Number three. These also are the generations of Aaron and Moshe in the day of Yahuwah spoke of Moshe, Moshe in Mount Sinai. And these are the names of the sons of Aaron. Nadav, the firstborn, Avihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the priests, which were anointed, whom he consecrated to minister in the priest's office. 
And Nadav and Avihu died before Yahuwah when they offered strange fire before Yahuwah in the wilderness of Sinai. And they had no children. And Eleazar and Ithumar ministered in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron, their father. Okay, anyone want to do a quick review of what happened with strange fire for anybody that hasn't been through this? What happened with strange fire? So the priest, so they basically just beginning the priesthood, their jobs of where they become priests. And they bring... Uh, fire with like some mixed something into it and they, they weren't supposed to do that was not commanded them to do they mixed something that was and more than likely they were a little sauced up more than likely they were a little bit under the you know drinking the the, the fruit of the vine and um, because right after that after they got burned to a crisp or even i don't even know if there was anything left of them maybe they were just completely burned up i don't know but they um yah said don't don't drink when you're doing this kind of work and so that's not a commandment for all of us it's just a commandment for the priestly stuff and then they basically they've died. So uh, the other the other family members basically took over the place. Yep. And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, saying, "Bring the tribe of Levi near and present them before Aaron the priest, that they may minister unto him." So they're bringing all of the Levites to them, and they shall guard his watch and the watch of the whole assembly before the tabernacle of the assembly, to do the service of the tabernacle. And they shall guard all the instruments of the tabernacle of the assembly and the charge of the children of Yashrael to do the service of the tabernacle. Now, this has, what does this say about the character of Aaron? Um, he's kind of like the leader. He's kind of like... Uh... Well, what does it say about the character of Aaron? What is it? What is it? What is it? When Yah has taken this one guy and basically all of you had, I don't know how many tribe, how many people we had in Levi right here at the time. But basically, they he put everybody in front of him, and, and they were supposed to minister unto Aaron, right? This is a, a, a huge, um, I mean, what, what are the characteristics of this? Uh, leadership. Um, Trust. I would say righteous, because he was chosen out of all of Levi. Right, and and so there's there's something here. You know, a lot of people don't don't take Aaron for, um, you know, he, his kids got all burned up. There's obviously something, maybe his parenting wasn't the greatest or maybe he didn't direct the kids correctly or something of the sort, which is probably why he was unable to cry or, um, you know, shed tears when, when his kids were, were, were burned up. So anyway, the character that I'm talking about is this guy had to be, even though Moshe was the man, Aaron was still the man as well because he was doing, he was, he was um, doing all this for Yah, right? He is the Yah's point man for all of this stuff. All of his people had to go through him. So... All right, did I do eight? I think that... And they shall guard the instruments of the tabernacle of assembly and the charge of the children of Yashrael to do the service of the tabernacle. And you shall give the Levium unto Aaron and his sons. They are wholly given unto him out of the children of Yashrael. So basically, it's like you put up, you know, the Aaron and his sons and you go, these are your people. And it's it's the entire tribe. So this is this is pretty huge. So he's the he's the main man. He's the He's the, the main guy. And you shall appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall guard their priest's office, and the stranger that comes nigh shall be put to death. And Yahuwah has spoken to El Moshe, saying, And I, behold, I have taken the Levium from among the children of Yashrael. Instead of all the firstborn that opens a womb among the children of Yashrael, therefore the Levium shall be mine. Okay, so this is giving us a little more hint into about the firstborn and the sanctification of it. Because, listen up. 13. Because all the firstborn are mine. For on the day that I smote all the firstborn of the land of Mitzrayim, I hollowed unto me all the firstborn in Yashrael, both man and beast. Mine shall they be. I am Yahuwah. All right. So that gives us an answer to the question we did not have before about the set apart of the very first people, right? Mm -hmm. So the very, this is again, this is, this is for the land. But I would still say that the firstborn is, of all is very special to Yah. And so he, he wants everything that is a firstborn. Uh, so your firstborn goldfish, your firstborn, uh, anything that you would have would be Yah's, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, this needs to go into the commandments, Nicole, under, under the, under the uh, setting apart one, uh, verse 13. Okay. And Yahuwah has spoken to Moshe in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, Number the children of Levi after the house of their fathers by their families, Every male from a month old and upward shall you number them. And Moshe numbered them according to the word of Yahuwah, as he was commanded. And these were the sons of Levi by their names, Gershon and Koheth and Meri. Merari. Merari. How do you say that? Merari. Merari. 
And these are the names of the sons of Gershon by their families, Livni and Shimni, and the sons of Kohath by their families, Amran and Yitshar, Kevron and Uziel. And the sons of Meri, er, Mer, get that, Merari. Mer, Merari. And the sons of Merari by their families, Makili and Mushi. These are the families of the Levium according to the houses of their fathers. Of Gershon was the family of the Levium and the family of the Sheminium. These are the families of the Gershonim. All right, what does your guys say there? What does that mean right there? From Gershon the cl came the clan of the Libanites and the clan of the Shimnites. These were the clans of the Gershonites. Shimnites. So, you know, when they say you're anti-Semitic, it's saying you're like anti-Shim, right? Is is the, the whole word. They branded, like the, the Jews of today have branded the word anti-Semitic to mean that you're attacking the Jews but it doesn't even make any sense. It would just be anti-Jewish. Yeah, you would, yeah, it would be instead of anti anti-Semitic, anti-Semite, you should be like uh, anti. Yeah, who died or something? It, it, well, you would still only be like uh, you would be only talking about the one tribe, right? You would want to be uh, uh, anti Yashrael or something like that. Would actually be correct um, versus this. So they they went and they branded this whole thing, and and nobody can say anything about the the whole six million thing, and nobody can say anything about any of that. And, um, yeah, you get banned completely off YouTube. You get banned off the Internet. And in fact, PayPal went and took my account one time <laughs> because of it. I kid you not. Those that were numbered of them, according to the number of all the males, from a month old and upward, even those that were numbered of them were 7,500. The families of the Gershinim shall pitch behind the tabernacle westward. So now we're, we're closer to the tabernacle. Right, so we had all of the actual tribes, the the twelve that were like bordering them. Right, that were bordering them, and it wasn't actually twelve tribes. It was like, well, Joseph, you had Manasseh and, and Ephraim, so it was like it was eleven. Yeah, eleven, and so, but they, I guess there's twelve because of this now, so it should be like the twelve tribes, like thirteen tribes maybe. Um, so the family and the chief of the house of the father of Gershinum shall be Elisef, Seth, the son of Leel. And the charge of the sons of Gershon in the tabernacle of the assembly shall be the tabernacle and the tent, the covering thereof and the hanging for the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And the hangings of the court and the curtain for the door of the court, which is by the tabernacle and by the altar round about and the cords of it for all the service thereof. All right, so what are we saying here? So basically, these guys got their own certain jobs where these they These guys were, got the, the curtains. These guys, guys are supposed to like, open and close the curtains. Go open and close the curtains and uh, a bunch of other stuff as well. Okay, and Kohath was the family of Amramium and the family of Yitcherim and the family of Kevronium and the family of Uzilium. And these are the families of the Kohethium. All right, what does that say in your guys's? Because those aren't words that anyone's to know. Okay. Amorites, Izzerites, so, Kevronites, and Uzias. So Kohath came... The clan of the Amor Amorites and the clan of the Yishorites and the clan of the Kebronites and the clan of the Uzielites. Now these aren't the same Amorites. These are Amram. These are Amramites. These yeah. aren't the Ammonites. Yeah, because Amram came from them. I think that's where Moses. His father was Amram. All right. So twenty-eight. In the number of all the males, from a month old and upward, were eight thousand and six hundred guarding the watch of the sanctuary. Okay, so all males from a month old. The number, um, why would they be guarding the sanctuary? I think they're like the inside, interior this protection. Mine says attending the duties of the sanctuary. Why would you have a guy that's a month old or more counted in this to take care of this? <laughs> we got a baby like wielding the sword or something. Dude, the baby's gonna destroy everything. We don't want this. this maybe, do maybe there's like a, a little, uh, what you call it? Like, uh, what's it, you have a bunch of kids together. Like, a nursery. Uh, nursery, thank you. Yeah, a little Levite nursery. It doesn't say Levite or, like, nursery. Slaughtering, like you're slaughtering animals. Like, that's hey kids, of, let's go look at this. Oh, that's, that's, that's oh look at the pet cat, a little pet uh, goat. Isn't he cute? Oh, he dead. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> it is terrible. Yeah, so no, this is not it. We're just cracking a joke. This is trying to be a little funny here. Um, probably not. Month old. Yeah, so I don't I don't understand this. So is anyone, Nicole, we can't move on to this. I don't understand this. And the number of the males from a month old and upward were 8,600. This is just, I Guarding think this is just duty. from this one yeah. tribe. Yeah, they're just counting the Guarding the duty of the Kadesh place. Why, but why are they guarding the duty of the Kadesh place? Yeah, a month that can't, old. That's, so... In the NIV, it says for the care of the sanctuary. 
Yeah, well, they're not going to... Nobody, nobody at that no. age is going to be caring yeah, for nothing. Yeah, nobody at one month old is going to be walking around doing sacrifices and doing the No, they're not going to be caring about... They're not going to be caring about anything, man. They're going to be... Same with Gershon, though. The males who were numbered of them from a month old and upward totaled 7,500. They ripped the curtains down or something? Yeah. So they're just numbering them. They're numbering them, but they're, the kids are not involved. They're not involved. Yeah, they right. definitely should not be in the holy place. Yeah, definitely not. All right. The families of the son of Kohath shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle southward. And the chief of the house of the father of the families of the Kohithium shall be Elietsenfen. I screwed that one up. Elietsafon. Elietsafon. Elietsafon, the son of Uziel. And their charge shall be the ark. And the table, and the menorah, and the altars, and the vessels of the sanctuary, where they minister, and the hanging, and all the service thereof. And Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, shall be chief over the chief of the Levium, and have the oversight of them that guard the watch of the sanctuary. I'm going to mess this one up again. Merari. Of Merari was the family of the Machlium, and the family of the Mushim. These are the families of Merari. And those that were numbered of them, according to the number of all the males from a month old and upward, were 6,200. And the chief of the house of the father of the families of Merari was Suriel, the son of Aviel Hayel. Avi Hayel. They shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle northward. And under the custody and charge of the sons of Merari shall be the boards of the tabernacle and the bars thereof and the pillars thereof and the sockets thereof and all the vessels thereof and all that serves thereto. And the pillars of the court round about and their sockets and their pins and their cords. But those that encamp before the tabernacle toward the east, even before the tabernacle of the assembly eastward shall be Moshe and Aaron and his sons, guarding the watch of the sanctuary for the watch of the children of Yashrael, and the stranger that comes nigh shall be put to death. And all that were numbered of the Levium, which Moshe and Aaron numbered at the commandment of Yahuwah throughout their families, all the males from a month old and upward were twenty and two thousand. All right, so there wasn't a ton of Levium, but these are just the men though. So we're talking like 22,000. The other guys, the warrior guys, were talking like 50-some thousand. There was a lot more. So the Levites did not have a lot of men. Like if they were going to war, they would not have a lot of people. Okay, and Yahuwah said unto El Moshe, Number all the firstborn of the males of the children of Yashrael from a month old and upward, and take the number of their names. And you shall take the Levium for me. I am Yahuwah. Instead of all the firstborn among the children of Yashrael, and the cattle of the Levium, instead of all the firstlings among the cattle of the children of Yashrael. And Moshe numbered, as Yahuwah commanded him, all the firstborn among the children of Yashrael. And all the firstborn males by the number of the names, number of names, from a month old and upward of those that were numbered of them, were twenty and two thousand two hundred and three score and thirteen. So twenty two thousand two hundred seventy three. That's different numbers though. This one has that's not thirteen. Uh, yeah. And the NIV has two twenty two thousand two hundred seventy three. That is oh, yeah, it would be two it's a one, three, three score and then right. thirteen. I got it. I see how they're doing. All right. And Yahuwah has spoken to El Moshe, saying, "Take the Levium instead of all the firstborn among the children of Yashrael, and the cattle of the Levium instead of their cattle, and the Levium shall be mine. I am Yahuwah. And for those that are to be redeemed of the two hundred and three score and thirteen of the firstborn of the children of Yashrael, which are more than the Levium." You shall take, you shall even take five shekels apiece by the pole. After the shekel of the sanctuary shall you take them. The shekel is twenty gerars. And you shall give the money, wherewith the odd number of them is to be redeemed unto Aaron and his sons, to his sons. And Moshe took the redemption money of them that were over and above them that were redeemed by the Levium. Okay, what, what's happening here? So basically this is, I think this is where we get like the whole redeem ransom thing. Yeah, they're, figure, they're paying. They figured out was uh, they were all supposed to give like everyone from Yashrael was supposed to give five shekels for the ransom, basically. Right. So this is like this is like um some sort of a tithe or mm. like some sort of way to fund the priests. And whatever like odd number I guess it was like extra change or whatever was like left over or something they were able to receive. So it's the two hundred and seventy three that are above the amount of the Levites. You want to come talk to us over here? 273 what? What are you talking about? We're so, trying to get her to the table, everyone. She's a little shy. All right. It says, but the firstborn males from a month old and upward were numbered 22,273. Right? 
Okay. 273 more than what the Levites were. So there's an extra 273 firstborn of the Israelites huh. that are above that. And so they're taking, and for those 273 who were redeemed of the firstborn of the Israelites who outnumbered the Levites. So they're redeeming those. Where are you reading this from? Um, I'm in the Amplified, but. Oh, that's really good. I didn't have that in mind. Okay, what else? And so you take the five shekels of peace, reckoning by sanctuary shekel of the 20 geras, for each one of those 273. Uh-huh. Okay, so they were redeeming those who had not been redeemed, I think? Is they that what we're doing? They were redeeming the 273. Extra, that have been born. Yes. Firstborn. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you, Nicole. I appreciate your help. Of the firstborn of the children of Yashrael took he the money, a thousand three hundred and three score and five shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary. So how many did you say there was? Two hundred what? Two hundred seventy-three. So two hundred seventy-three times five is what? One thousand three hundred sixty-five. Uh, is that a good guess? No, it's just right here in the Bible. It's just they took one thousand three hundred. Right, but is that what it is? Sixty-five is that, that would, pieces. Hold on. Two seventy-three times five. Yeah. Yep. It is. Yep. Oh, you got it. Hey, Nicole got it. There it is. One thousand three hundred sixty-five. Okay. So they just redeemed him. Five shekels a pop. <laughs> okay, here we go. 51. And Moshe gave the money of them that were redeemed unto Aaron and his, to his sons, according to the word of Yahuwah, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. Something, they walked away rich that day. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't know about rich. I mean, this is all Yah's stuff. I mean, these people were the well, job just, of these people. For, they said this was for them. I don't think this was strictly went to the house. I think this was just for them. Yeah, but I, I mean, the, the priests had all their food. I mean, these, these people, are, I think, were totally set apart. I don't, I don't see them so much as being like part of the regular tribe or doing the same stuff the rest of the tribes do. I think you'd have to be a little holier being in that tribe, I would think, but I don't know. So anyway, that is it. Um, that takes us to the end of this today, and um, I guess uh, that will wrap us up. Thank you guys very much, everybody out there. Big Digital Family, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you guys for spending some time in the Word of Yah. May you guys be blessed. May Yah's light shine upon you. May He give you grace. May He give you peace. May He give you the Torah written on your hearts, minds, and souls. And um, with that, many blessings from all of us. Uh, gentlemen, do you have anything else? We've got us uh, four to go pour, so uh, have yeah, a oh, good day. Tonight, hold on, we need a sales pitch. Uh, yes, tonight, tonight is, tune in. is the uh, Youth Ria English. We will be there live around 6 p.m. CST. And we got smoted on the Youth Ria for Spanish. If anyone out there, probably none of you guys even care. We got smoted on that. We were going to try to do that next week. Um, so we, we definitely have had a rough week. Um, but we will not uh, waste our time on the other one. We will definitely not waste our time that we have free. We will be putting it to Yaw's time. And tonight we will be at whatever, same time as it always is. It's like 6 o'clock here. Well, I don't know what time that is the rest of the world. Um, but we will be on that. And, same time I've uh, been for the last 15 times. Yes, we hope you guys join us. And uh, it is Youth for Yaw, but it seems like everybody and their uh, everybody and their dog comes. And so it's not really Youth for Yaw, it's Youth for everybody. So um, you guys feel free to join in. We're going over Proverbs what, John? 16. 16. And what's this about? Uh, wisdom. Well, I know that's what Proverbs is about. What else? Can you give uh, more details? It's, it's like weights and measurements. Weights and so measurements. Being righteous, being holy. Um, right. Good things to know, right? Yeah, stay away from wickedness. Stuff like uh, that. Yes, all the things we should be doing. All right. All right. Much love, everybody. All Thank right. you, guys. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.